We have a lot to cover today in the trade rumor front. We have talk about the Calgary Flames, Nashville Predators, Anaheim Ducks, Philadelphia Flyers, Columbus Blue Jackets, New York Islanders, and others. Plus, we have the finalists for the King Clancy Award. We also have a signing in Long Island and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot of news to cover today. Uh, before we get into the trade rumor section, we do have a handful of other news items I want to touch on here quickly as well. Uh, we have the finalists for the King Clancy Memorial Trophy. Uh, the finalists for this award include uh, Darnell Nurse of the Edmonton Oilers, Michael Backlund of the Calgary Flames, and Islanders captain Anders Lee. Of course, this award is for leadership on and off the ice and for a player who has made a significant charitable contribution in their community. So obviously these players have all demonstrated that. So we'll uh, see who the winner is at the NHL award ceremony. We have a couple of signings today, including a more significant one in Los Angeles. Of course, after the move that we saw yesterday with the Ivan Provorov trade, it's kind of what we'll call it. Uh, but for LA, it was really a cap dump situation. Yes, LA picked up Provorov and flipped him to the Blue Jackets, retained a little bit of his salary, but they get to move out Cal Peterson and Sean Walker freeing up significant money on their salary cap situation. So they've now signed defenseman Vladislav Gavrikov on a two-year contract extension at a 5.875 AAV. So he gets a full no-move clause as well. And over those two years, there's $12 million worth of signing bonuses paid out uh, over the two-year time span as well, a bit in each season. So obviously Gavrikov and his agent, who's Dan Milstein, had made it uh, known, I guess, that they only wanted two years. I guess he wanted the ability to be a free agent again in a couple of years. And they kind of get a new deal, likely make more money once the salary cap increases in a couple of years' time. So um, I know there's probably uh, some that thought maybe it's not a great idea. He should take the job security because the Kings it sounded like they were more interested in a you know four to six year deal. But uh, understandable, he's looking to make as much money as he can, and if he's confident that's going to happen, then it's a good way to go. But at the same time, it's tricky, right? Because you don't, you never know about injuries and things like that. But Gavrikov was a good fit in LA. They're quite happy with him after getting him at the deadline. And now he's been re-signed. Be interesting to see if LA pursues goalie Jonas Corposalo, who they also acquired in that same trade with Columbus after moving on Cal Peterson. Uh, they do obviously have Phoenix Copley under contract. Uh, and of course, they have uh, Eric Portillo, who they had picked up from the Buffalo Sabres before. But he doesn't have any NHL experience at this point. I would think Portillo... Likely, they probably want him to be the, the um, at least the starter or at least part of the tandem in the American Honk League for a season or two before he gets an NHL chance. So, because basically, Copley could be like a placeholder for him for a, a year or two time while he's going through his development. And I think they're going to want somebody with more experience to be their starter since they're in kind of a win now territory. Uh, so, we will see what LA decides to do. Um, they were certainly in talks with another starting goaltender. At the deadline, which didn't work out before they made the trade with Columbus. And we'll talk a little bit further about that in the trade rumor section of the video coming up here in just a few moments. So LA obviously very busy already. Uh, and I would imagine they're going to continue to be when it comes to the New York Islanders. We have a signing there as well. This one as a uh, prospect, an entry-level deal. Um, the Islanders have signed E2 uh, Liukas, who gets a three-year entry-level contract. He was a fifth-round selection in 2021. He's a forward from Finland. I have played over in Liga. He has represented his country playing for Finland internationally as well, most recently in the 2022 World Junior Championships. Uh, he's got one more year on his contract, so it sounds like he's most likely playing in Finland next year. Makes the jump to North America uh, and gets into the Islander system, starting with their minor league system most likely. He projects at this point to be likely a bottom six type of player, a guy who can play like more of a grinding type of role, penalty killing, that type of stuff. Does have some offensive upside, but... Not really looking like the type of role, at least at this point, that he's destined for should he become a regular full-time NHLer down the road. We know the Islanders certainly have um, you know, an, an aging team, and they have a lot of uh, long-time uh, veteran players that have been playing, especially what they call their identity line with Sezekis and Martin and Clutterbuck. Next couple of years, they're going to slowly all be kind of moving on here too. Um, so there should be some openings if he, if he works out to take that kind of a spot. So we'll have to wait and see. An update as well on the Calgary Flames coaching front. Of course, we know they've got their GM. Now they're trying to find their head coach. It's believed that Craig Conroy has it narrowed down to about four people. Uh, and at this point, there was some talk about who those four people were. Elliot Freeman made uh, some mentions here on the 32 Thought podcast that came out this morning, which one name that was a little bit surprising. But we know there's still a couple of internal candidates, including Ryan Huska and Mitch Love. They're still very much in the mix. 
They're still talking to Travis Green as, as well. Of course, the former Vancouver Canuck head coach. And apparently the fourth name, which caught me off guard, was Todd Reardon. Now, Todd Reardon has had a chance to be an NHL head coach before. It did not go well. Didn't last very long. Uh, of course, that was in Washington. Um, he's been a longtime NHL assistant coach. And he's done wonderful things and been a terrific coach with defense. He's really helped a lot of defenders improve their game, turn some careers around. Uh, he's been a really good uh, resource in that sense for a few NHL teams working on their decor. Um, so I don't know where he's already had an opportunity and he kind of went back to what he was doing before. I'm, I'm surprised in a way. I'm, I'm not shocked he's interested, but I don't know if he's really cut out for that, to be completely honest. I mean, we'll see. Obviously, you learn a lot as you go. And sometimes the second time around, you do a better job. But we'll see where that goes. It'll be interesting to see what direction the Calgary Flames go. I would suspect they're most likely going to go internal, but. We'll see where that goes. Because if they don't hire Mitch Love, I would think that whoever they hire is going to probably be there for at least a couple of years. And Mitch Love is likely going to get an opportunity to go somewhere else and leave the organization during that time frame. So they have to decide if that's their guy or not because they've got to be prepared to lose him if they don't give them the opportunity. Now, on to the trade rumor section of the video. And we have a lot to talk about today, uh, a lot of which revolves around goaltenders. I think we're going to have a very busy uh, trade season then we're gonna have a very busy goalie carousel which the last couple of years has been fairly steady in that regard but this time around i think we're gonna have some bigger names there's a lot of bigger time goaltenders that could be changing teams this season now, of course yesterday uh we we got started talking about uh, one of those in carter Hart. we've talked about some of these guys off and on uh some of them we're not going to spend a lot of time on today but we already know that like, guys like connor hellebuck is very much out there we learned yesterday that Carter Hart of Philadelphia, very much out there. Now, today in the podcast, I talked about Hart a little bit further, um, talking about some of the teams that were linked to him. Uh, they talked about Buffalo and Ottawa and said they weren't really sure about those. Apparently, somebody within one of Freeman's Ottawa sources apparently denied um, that they were in on him. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a lot of sense if they were, and we'll see. Uh, Merrick brings up the San Jose Sharks as a, as a landing spot that makes a ton of sense, and that does. So we know the Sharks don't want to completely tear it down and rebuild, and I don't think they can anyway, to be honest, given the number of long-term contracts they have on the books. Uh, but their goaltending situation is very much questionable. We don't know where they're heading in that regard. So certainly he's young, and you know he's not uh, a rookie, but he's certainly not an older vet either. So he's, he's a guy that would kind of mesh what they're looking for so it wouldn't be shocking if they were in the mix of course the only problem though is this is going to be a big price tag he's a young golden there with a with a high upside so i suspect that the flyers and looking at what they just got from Provorov, danny briere is looking to, to land some home runs here and he's certainly not going to be taken to the cleaner so teams are going to have to be willing to pay up um or he won't they won't get him. it's just that simple so from that regard i do question whether or not he will get traded and lost teams are really willing to pay which we'll see because there's a lot of options out there in america right now so we'll see but montreal was brought up and so was toronto and they're both interesting i mean uh montreal was brought up which to me didn't make a lot of sense i understand montreal with, with where they're on to rebuild how that might make sense uh they don't have a clear-cut goalie of the future they have jake allen for uh, another year or so on their contract and he's obviously a little bit older now um more of a mentor backup slash tandem guy um so he could he can still be helpful but he's not necessarily going to be a starting goaltender on a long-term basis that's for sure we know that uh with, with where he's at in his career samuel montembeau has been a nice surprise um numbers haven't been the greatest but the defense of Harlem haven't been the greatest either so that's getting better in a real good showing at the world championships for playing for team canada um but montembeau is certainly somebody they want to keep around I don't think they have a ton of confidence right now in Caden Primo as being the goal of the future, so it makes sense they might try to bring in somebody uh, a little bit younger. Um, they reference the fact that Carter Hart's goalie idol, you could say, growing up, and favorite player was Carey Price. I don't know if that really plays a role here, to be honest, because this is this is not Carter Hart being a free agent trying to go to where he really wants to play. You know, this is the case of teams looking to trade for him. Different scenario. The team's not going to trade. For somebody because they were a Habs fan or because they idolized Carey Price. They, I mean, Hart does have a lot of Carey Price characteristics and how just his makeup. I don't know. I'm not sure he's ever going to be as good as a goalie as him. That's a pretty high standard to set. But, you know, anyways, like, I don't know. We'll see. But the Toronto apparently is somebody that Freeman's been told to watch for. Uh, and he's been told this multiple times. 
Not saying it's going to happen for sure, but obviously if it did, it would put another goalie on the market, which would be Sam Sonoff, who's a pending restricted free agent. If the Maple Leafs go after Hart, there's no way they could keep Sam Sonoff. And to me, I'm not really sure. I mean, the Sam Sonoff was pretty good for them this year. They do need to move Matt Murray. And obviously that was one thing they talked about, the fact that Murray, if, if the Flyers hadn't have already made this pro route trade and taken Cal Peterson, apparently there was some talk about the Flyers may be able to take Murray. But they're not going to do that now that they've already taken Peterson. They're not going to take two goalies on bad contracts like that. So we'll see. I would suspect that the Leafs, they have to move Murray for a variety of reasons um, or buy him out, one of the two. So we'll see how that goes. But Toronto, Montreal, San Jose, Buffalo, Ottawa, all teams are watching Carter Hart. We know John Gibson's out there. Hasn't been linked to any specific teams. There's a lot of talk about his hometown team in Pittsburgh. I don't know how new uh, president and their Kyle Dubas feels about everything, but certainly Gibson's on the market. So like we already have Gibson and Hellebach and now Hart that's been on the market that we know about. And a couple other big time goalies that are kind of apparently going to be on the market as well, include UC Saros uh, and uh, maybe Jacob Marks or maybe, I mean, the Predators and Saros, I mean, it was kind of blood to believe last year, the deadline of Saros and Yossi were like your untouchables. That's not completely the case. Uh, America Freeman both confirmed they had sources confirming that the LA Kings and Nashville Predators held talks around a UC Saros trade. I've seen enough reports as well confirming that the asking price from the Predators was two first round picks and something else, likely a prospect. And the Kings thought that was too much and took a step back and decided not to go any further with it. So the fact that they were having those conversations, I you know, you do wonder if the LA Kings will revisit will they come back and talk to Nashville again about Cyrus see if anything's changed is the asking price going to be any different will other teams kind of get in the mix and that a little bit and that more if they find out that maybe he could be available so basically the way they put it was that Barry Trotz isn't out there necessarily definitely wanting to trade UC Cyrus but it seems like he's willing to listen and if the right offer came along I think it's something they seriously consider they do have Yaroslav Askarov in the minors who looks Pretty close to being ready, so the, you know they and they had Kevin Lankin in as well. They could run with that as a tandem for a little while if they decided that it was time for the Saros trade to take place. So we'll see what happens. But another goalie there on the market, and then they talked about Calgary as well. And we know that, uh, of course, new GM there, Craig Conroy, just like all you know, other teams like the Leafs have a new GM, the Penguins. So you want you don't really have a full feel yet on, um, you know, what they're philosophies are going to be what their vision is for the team you're trying to wait and see as they start to make their moves and kind of leave their stamp on the team here but Merrick says after the way that Markstrom has played there the last couple of years you have to think that Craig Conroy at the very least has a conversation with Markstrom about the possibility of moving the problem here is that Markstrom has a full no move clause so they can't trade him without his consent so of course we know that Calgary is most definitely I think moving a goaltender if it's not Markstrom then Danny Vladar will have to go. There's no way they, they let Dustin Wolf uh, try to spend more time in the minors. That's not going to happen. He's He's got nothing left to prove there. He's too good. He needs to be in the NHL to see if he can have that same level of success at the higher level. So to me, Wolf will 100% be in the NHL next year. Just a matter if he's partnered with, with Vladar, another goalie, or Markstrom. I mean, uh, it's difficult to say, but Obviously, the Markstrom experiment in Calgary has had its time where it's been good. He hasn't been bad the whole time. Ever since they lost a playoff series to the Oilers uh, two seasons back, like this seems like his, um, it kind of got to him mentally, and he hasn't really been the same. Uh, he didn't have a good playoff, and then this year his numbers weren't great, and you just wonder if they're going to explore that possibility. Like I said, now, Markstrom says, I don't want to go anywhere, then it doesn't go any further than that. It's just that simple. He's got full control here based on what they give him on his contract. So uh, not a given that he becomes one of the big goalies on the market. But you do have to think that Merrick or Freeman have a valid point, that you have to think that Calgary at least looks at it, recognizes, hey, we need to move a goalie here. Wolf has to get to the NHL. Potentially give him some more cap wiggle room as well, depending on where he goes. Um, obviously, he's probably not going to want to go just anywhere. So if he did agree to it, hard to say where that could be that he would improve. I don't know, but just another big name goaltender that you can certainly look out for to possibly be on the market. It's a lot of goaltenders for sure between Hellbach, Markstrom, Saros, Gibson, Hart. And that's just guys available for trade that are, you know, upper echelon goalies. You, can, you might have a guy like Aiden Hill who's in the Stanley Cup final. He's a, uh, right now a pending unrestricted free agent. 
I'm sure Vegas is going to probably want to sign him and keep him, but are they going to be able to? I mean, his price is going to go way up, especially if they win the cup, and they don't have the most uh, flexible cap situation. So as much as they might want to, it's going to be challenging. So I'm sure they'll try everything, but still, there's another one that could be on the market as well, not to mention Corpusalo in Los Angeles, who played well down the stretch and in the playoffs. And uh, they're, they're not the only ones out there, too. There's certainly other goalies, too. So it could be a very, very interesting goal to their carousel, to say the least. A couple of other rumors as well, including the uh, Jackets and Islanders. Um, of course, after the Provorov trade yesterday, has been pretty well known here that Yermo Kakalainen, according to Elliot Freeman, is working really hard on rebuilding that team's blue line, something he did a couple of years back, but it hasn't quite worked out. Of course, they have Zach Wierenski. Now they have Ivan Provorov. Uh, they do have a few other guys that are... You know, interesting to the point that it could be pieces longer term, but it's still not completely sure, right? Uh, of course, they had to trade Gavrikov at the trade deadline, and they're not done. Uh, so he's had other conversations around other blue liners. I believe that they talked to the Devils to see if they would consider um, trading the rights of Damon Severson. He's a pending unrestricted free agent. So that was one, and apparently there's talk that they might have been interested in doing the same with Boston about Dmitry Orlov. And if they don't talk to them or trade for them ahead of time, I would expect for them to check in when it comes for the time for free agency when they can do that. So look for the Blue Jackets and Kekalainen to be quite aggressive here uh, with uh, you know blue line acquisitions and trying to rebuild that. I don't think they're done if they can help it. Um, it's belief as well that Mike Babcock, of course, is expected to be named the head coach of the Blue Jackets, was a big fan of Ivan Provorov coming out of a junior and that uh, his first season uh, being with the Leafs, when it was the 2015 draft, was where he was hired shortly before that. And, of course, that was the uh, the McDavid draft, if you want to call it that, or the Jack Eichel. One, well, Mitch Marner went number four to the Leafs. Ivan Provorov a couple picks later to the Flyers. And there is some rumors that Babcock really pushed for the Leafs to take Provorov. Of course, Mark Hunter was leading the draft, of course, with his connections to the London Knights, where Mitch Marner played his junior. There was no doubt he was taking Marner. And ultimately, it was Hunter's call. That's reading as built into his contract that he had that final decision um, um, piece. So, you know, obviously, it's hard to say what is going to happen here. But uh, there's already wondering and talk if Babcock might have in, in kind of influenced the Provorov trade a little bit here with the Jackets. So we'll see. On Long Island, we had Lou Lamarillo speak yesterday. And I did touch on this a bit in yesterday's video. Uh, certainly, like, you know, number of days late after locker cleanout day when you expect a GM to, to, to speak or within a day or so of that. Um, and of course, like I said, there wasn't a lot of big news really quotes that really came from that. We didn't learn a ton. We did talk about a few of the smaller things we learned yesterday, you know, around some injuries, uh, free agents that may, may or may not be back with the Islanders. But one comment he did make that was interesting, uh, I didn't think about it as much of it at the time, but then uh, Freeman brought it up in the podcast as well and got me thinking a little bit further. And I think they made a really good point here. Uh, Lou made a point at one point to talk about the fact that they have five natural centers and that is a real strong suit of the team and gives them the flexibility to structure things differently and go with a different look in the forward group. Now, of course, the five forwards would include Barzell, Horvat, um, Casey Sezikis, Brock Nelson, and jean Gabriel Pajot. Of course, Barzell moved to the wing and he talked about how he was comfortable with that and, and agreed with the decision from Coach Lane Lambert to do so. And of course, he played with Horvat. Of course, before he got hurt and missed a, a big stretch of time there. Um, but it kind of makes you wonder if you were talking about the fact that they have so many centers as the way for him to kind of put it out there that he liked to trade one. And to be honest, there's already been some rumors leading back into later into last year that they were looking to make some moves in that regard. Obviously, Barzell and Horvat would not be included in that. Barzell signed long-term their cornerstone piece. They just acquired Horvat. He's not going anywhere, of course. Uh, you got Nelson, Sezikis, and Pajo. Brock Nelson, to me, has played really well for them and been one of their more consistent forwards. Sezikis is signed to a long-term deal to be that bottom six guy. So to me, the odd guy out is Pajo. And I've kind of thought that for probably the better part of a year. He has not really lived up to his contract after being acquired from the Ottawa Senators. They signed him to a five-year, $5 million per year contract. And he has had his moments when he's played well. He hasn't always been you know, underperforming per se. But overall, I think it's fair to say that based on what he's getting paid, the um, the results just are not quite where they need to be. And out of all of them, to me, I think he's somebody that uh, would probably maybe benefit from a change. Obviously, things haven't quite completely worked out. I know he seems to be quite happy there. 
uh, since the deal. But I think they wouldn't be shocked here if the Islanders want to make a trade to upgrade other areas of the team. Uh, they need more scoring. We've talked about that in the video I put out yesterday with the, the offseason series I'm working on. We did the Islander video yesterday, and they definitely need to score more goals. And Pajot has not been a big contributor to that, but he is a good two-way center, more better suited for a third-line type of duty. And to be honest, you know, maybe you package Pajot with something else and you try to use that as maybe being a piece to, to get somebody who could be more offensive and add to that top six. So wouldn't be shocking if Lou was kind of dropping some hints to say that, hey, I've got a plethora of centers here. Obviously, everybody knows that centermen is a big part of how you win. You kind of go right down the middle between your centermen and your goaltender and your top two defensemen are, are kind of like your your key cogs to to success, to have a good shot at winning the Stanley Cup. And um, if one of them could be available to me, he would be the guy. And it makes sense that the Islanders would make that kind of trade. So we'll see. We know Lou keeps everything pretty close to the vest, but sometimes when he speaks, he just have to listen closely, kind of pick up a little little nuggets of uh, trinkets of information that you can kind of decipher as maybe being a, a, something that you might see happen. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>